It's been known for a long time that uh, patients with mild cognitive impairment and early Alzheimer's disease have a deficit in the brain's ability, the, nerve, the cells in the brain's ability to use glucose as an energy source. And that is based on PET imaging, positron emission tomography with radio labeled uh, form of glucose. And so, and then back in the early 1990s, we showed in my laboratory that the amyloid beta peptide, when it's in an aggregating state, can impair the glucose transporter protein that moves glucose, glucose into neurons. Uh, that was cell culture work. So we directly exposed the neurons to the amyloid protein and then measured glucose uptake. And uh, so... However, it, increasing evidence suggests that uh, neurons can still use ketones as an energy source, uh, at least in mild cognitive impairment. Uh, this needs to be looked at in Alzheimer's disease specifically. So there's this increased thinking that if... Um, from the standpoint of both risk reduction and treatment in, in the early course of the disease that um, interventions that boost ketone levels may be beneficial. Now, one way to do that is with ketogenic diet. Another way is by fasting, intermittent fasting. So during fasting, your the glucose stores in your liver are depleted and your body and, and brain cells start using ketones, which come from fats. Uh, and so in our laboratory in animal models of Alzheimer's disease, where the mice accumulate amyloid beta peptide and have tau pathology, when we put them on an every other day fasting regimen, uh, this is long-term now, it, uh, it delays the onset of cognitive impairment and, and mitigates some of the neuropathology. And um, then we also showed in these mice, and this is the, mainly the 3X TGAD model, which is one of the most widely used models that was developed by Frank LaFerla with our help. And anyway, so we found that if we supplement the diet of these Alzheimer's mice with a ketone ester, which is essentially the exact same ketone molecule that's produced from fats when we're fasting uh, or on a ketogenic diet, that ketone ester will um, ameliorate uh, the pathology and some of the cognitive deficits. And then we started looking at neural network activity in the brains of the animals uh, in two ways. One is by EEG recording, electroencephalogram. So that's kind of a non-invasive way. And we found that these Alzheimer's mice have um, hyperexcitability. They have, uh, and actually as they get older, they develop seizures, epileptic seizures. But even before they develop observable seizures, they have abnormal hyperexcitability of neurons. Again, going back to our cell culture work in the 1990s, uh, I think my, my most highly cited uh, original research article was where I showed that with colleagues that amyloid beta peptide renders neurons vulnerable to excitotoxicity. So it can cause hyperexcitability. And it's also known that Alzheimer's patients have a very large increased incidence of epileptic seizures compared to age match control subjects. So then anyway, uh, the ketone ester suppressed in the Alzheimer's mouse model, the ketone ester uh, suppressed the neural hyperexcitability and, and prevented the development of seizures and had beneficial effects. Um, and then finally, with the intermittent fasting, we found that uh, by recording electrical activity in individual neurons in the hippocampus, 
we found that um, the, the animals adapted to intermittent fasting, there's reduced excitability, and it's due to enhanced GABA tone. GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. So anyway, the bottom line is that the fasting and the ketones seem to enhance the inhibitory tone, enhance GABA, which constrains the excitability of the glutamatergic neurons, the neurons that use glutamate, which is the main neurons that degenerate in Alzheimer's disease. 